Gregor Mendel's principles revolutionized the way we understand inheritance. He developed the concepts of genetics by tending to pea plants. Today, we'll be learning them by observing some galactic dinosaurs. To introduce you to genetics, our spaceship is going to make a quick stop. Ever wonder where dinosaurs really came from? Well, what if they were intergalactic space-traveling aliens who loved visiting Earth on holiday? Welcome to the original space dinosaur's humble abode, planet Jurassicum. Every somatic cell of an organism contains the same set of genetic information, but how is that information stored? For that, we'll start by exploring these viney forests. Chromosomes are tightly packed bundles of DNA and protein. In eukaryotic organisms, the vast majority of genetic information is stored in chromosomes found in each cell's nucleus. These vines represent eukaryotic chromosomes. You'll notice these vines only have one strand, even though you probably usually see chromosomes drawn as that two-stranded X shape. Well, chromosomes are only found in that shape during mitosis and meiosis. When cells are not replicating, chromosomes are linear and single-stranded. Locus means the location on a chromosome where a specific gene is found, and the plural of locus is loci. Loci are often represented as bands on a chromosome. I hope you're not afraid of bugs. This giant space locus is wearing some pretty nifty scanning glasses that are illuminating a region of the vines in an ominous color, a locus. You probably already know a bit about DNA. Sections of DNA that code for traits in an organism are called genes. The region of vine that's being scanned represents a gene of interest. The space locus is scanning the viney chromosome of one such gene. Let's zoom in to what this locus is scanning. Genes can have a number of alternative forms known as alleles. Individuals often have differences in the DNA sequence of the same genes, and these variations can change how the gene product functions. Some genes have many alleles, but we'll simplify things a bit and illustrate only two alleles per gene. These two um, delightful flowers on these stems represent different alleles. The flowers are different because the DNA sequences of the alleles are different. There are many allelic variations of genes on each chromosome. The total compilation of genetic material in an organism is called the genome. The genome, or should I say G-dome, is represented by a large glass dome surrounding these vines. Let's take a closer look at one dinosaur's G-dome. The genome contains all of an organism's genetic info, including regulatory and junk DNA regions. But a genotype is an organism's total collection of genes, the DNA that codes for traits. It looks like our giant space locust from earlier was rather helpful. He seems to have been collecting data on all the different types of flowers found in this dinosaur's G-dome. This space dinosaur is using her phone to get a look at the data. She can zoom in to see the particular flowers at any given location, just like a genotype would reveal the summary of alleles at a particular locus. But how many alleles will be there at that locus? Well, some organisms have just one set of chromosomes, while other organisms have two or even more copies of each chromosome. Chromosomes in most human cells come in pairs known as homologs, or homologous chromosomes, just like each of these vines comes in a pair. The male and female symbols at the bottoms of these vines are meant to remind you that one copy of each chromosome is passed down from each biological parent, one sperm cell and one egg cell. The number of chromosome copies in a cell is called its ploidy. Since humans have one pair of homologous chromosomes, they have two complete chromosomal sets. In humans, there are 22 of these homologs present, plus two sex chromosomes, totaling 46 chromosomes in the human genome. Haploid cells only have one complete set of chromosomes. No copies, no pairs, just one set of chromosomes, which means one allele per gene. This haplosaurus, Harriet, walks alone to represent that haploids only have one set of chromosomes. Harriet is a happy, independent dinosaur. Most haploid organisms are ones that reproduce asexually, but humans have some haploid cells too, namely gametes, sperm cells, and egg cells. Harriet the haplosaurus has some spots that look like gametes to remind you that gametes are haploid. Diploid cells have homologs. There are two copies of each chromosome in a diploid cell. Two space diplodocuses are neck-hugging to show that there are two copies of each chromosome in a diploid cell. Generally, sexually reproducing organisms are diploid, inheriting one chromosome set from each biological parent. Diploid organisms carry two copies of each gene, one on each chromosome. For each gene, there are three different genotypic combinations of two alleles. Let's look at these vines to understand this in more depth. 
Though each copy of a given chromosome has the same structure and carries the same genes, homologs don't necessarily have the same alleles. Take a look at the flowers at the very top of these vines. Both are red anthuriums, which represents homologous chromosomes with the same alleles at a given gene, an example of homozygosity. So what about homologs with different alleles? If you look at the bottom of our vines, you can see a red anthurium on one vine, but a corpse flower on the other vine. This represents how individuals can carry different alleles for the same gene on each homolog. Now, in the middle of our vines, you can see that one flower is missing from the vine on the left. This represents a hemizygous state, where an allele of a particular gene is missing on a homolog. Hemizygosity is present when there's only one gene copy in a diploid organism. Sex chromosomes are the most common example of hemizygosity. Human females typically have two X chromosomes, which are homologs, and hence not hemizygous for X chromosome genes. Males, however, typically have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. Therefore, they only have one copy of almost all genes found on the X chromosome. Hence, they're hemizygous for such genes. Well, that was a colossal amount of genetics. Before we get lost in the weeds, let's run through a quick recap. I'm here all week. Okay, let's just wrap this up. Genetic information in eukaryotes is stored in chromosomes. A locus represents the physical location of a gene along a chromosome, and genes are sections of DNA that code for traits. The different variants of a gene are known as alleles, and some change how the gene functions. We only represented two possible alleles per gene. All of an organism's DNA is collectively known as the organism's genome. The genotype, on the other hand, is the collection of genes in an organism that codes for traits. Chromosomes in most human cells come in pairs known as homologs. One chromosome of the pair comes from each biological parent. Most human cells have homologs, carrying two complete chromosome sets. Most asexually reproducing organisms are haploid, meaning these organism cells have only one complete set of chromosomes. However, it's important to note that eukaryote gametes are haploid. Sexually reproducing organisms largely have diploid cells, two chromosome sets per cell. The cells of these individuals have one pair of homologs. Since diploid organisms have two chromosome sets per cell, they also have two alleles per gene, which could be the same or different. A homozygous genotype is observed when both allele copies of a particular gene are the same. When the alleles of a particular gene are different, the genotype is considered heterozygous. Hemizygosity occurs when one allele is present in a diploid organism. The most common example of hemizygosity is the X and Y chromosomes observed in biologically determined males. This was your introductory tour to planet Jurassicum, but there are many more surprises on this cozy planet that await us. Do you think these dinosaurs are Jurassicormous or what? Yikes!